What's the biggest misconception about landscape architect? Well, I think it'd have to be that we just kind of, you know, shrub up a, around the edges. We just do a bit of planting around the sides. Mm -hmm. That's probably the biggest misunderstanding. <laughs> Uh, Mike, it's World Landscape Architecture Month, uh, so I'm curious as to know uh, what made you want to get into landscape architecture? Um, well, I think it was a combination of uh, design, environmental issues and social issues that I was interested in that really got me started. But then as I've kind of gone through and, and, and understood more about the complexity of landscape architecture uh, and the scope and the scale, that's really um, grew my passion, actually. Are there any local projects in Australia that you particularly love? Yeah, there's quite a few actually. I mean, one that I've been thinking about recently is Ballast Point Park. I think that's a really interesting example of, of how uh, the history of a site has been reinterpreted. You know, all this kind of effort was made to understand what the multiple layers of history were on that site and then to kind of re-manifest um, that in a new contemporary way. Um, so that kind of memory of the site's embedded in, in the place. Similarly, actually, another one, but on a small scale, is Reservoir Gardens in, in Paddington. And that's been turned into now this kind of sunken garden. It's kind of, you know, mystical in some ways, but it's like this really um, interesting lost world, you know, in the middle of Paddington. It'd be hard to think of a single other space in Sydney that's quite like that. Uh, what are your landscape architecture pet peeves? My pet peeve is really, it's in, in the form of a missed opportunity, and that's, that's the kind of obsession with using so much of our public domain for cars. You know, if you look at the kind of typical street, it's like 80% asphalt, you know, for, for moving cars and for parking cars. And you think, well, that could be so many other things, you know, as, as landscape architects, we think about this stuff all the time. So you back out in private practice, you get an email, the email's about a job inquiry, and it turns out to be your dream, dream job. What is that job or project? A classic one that's been on the cards for a while now is the Bayes Precinct. Um, and, you know, sites like that have just such huge opportunities to really contribute to the broader city and achieve benefits for the broader city. So I think those kind of large projects I'd be really excited about being involved in. What's your proudest achievement in landscape architecture? Uh, well, most recently I'd probably have to say submitting my PhD. That was a pretty big achievement. But another one that comes to mind is a, a regional bicycle network project. Um, so that was kind of planning how a separated cycleway network could be extended across 15 inner city councils. And that was um, a, a bit of an achievement for me because that was the first ever um, bicycle project that had ever been shortlisted for federal funding. So Mike, you've worked on um, a lot of projects. Have you ever been concerned that any of the projects that you've been a part of um, wouldn't ever actually reach the goals that they set out to achieve? Those big projects, there's just so many stakeholder groups and there's so many government agencies um, and there's a lot of competing ideas and, and that's interesting but it, it, it is very, very challenging, you know, and, and I think you need to uh, you, well, you do learn over the years that you take the wins where you can get them, yeah. you know, and sometimes you don't get the wins, but you kind of chip away and you do what you can and, um, and each small win is a, is a good one. 